Hi. So if you're interested in how capacitors work and how um, low pass filters with um, resistors and capacitors work, well, this is the right place because um, I'm interested in the same thing and figuring it out. And I hope I can help you understand um, really the basics of, of how this works. And if you do understand how, the, how these work, it's pretty easy to kind of just transfer that to how a high pass filter would work and even how a low and high pass filter using inductor instead of capacitor would, would work. So let's get going, and I'd like to use a, a web app to do this. It's at filestad.com, so if you want to go here, um, you can try this stuff out yourself, but it um, makes for a good way to visualize everything that's going on here. So what we have here is a, a circuit where I've got this, um, this input DC voltage here. I've got this resistor at 187 ohms, and i got this capacitor here at 10 microfarads. And I've also got sort of a circuit on the side here with a, a resistor just because I want to show how this capacitor dissipates the charge. Um, but let's go, go ahead and see what happens when I go ahead and flip this switch. When I flip that switch, that current's going to start flowing because I've got this, um, this voltage source here with, at 5 volts. And that 5 volts is shown by this green line here. That's, our, that's the voltage of our source. And there's going to be a red line down here that's going to show the voltage across our capacitor. So what you're going to see when I flip this switch is that voltage across the capacitor is going to to increase until it matches the voltage of our source. So go ahead and flip the switch. You can see that current's flowing and that voltage across our capacitor is rising until after a few milliseconds it, it matches what's um, the voltage of our source. And then if I go ahead and flip the switch you can see that that current's going to sort of dissipate. It's going to travel through this resistor and until that um, it sort of runs out of charge and there's no voltage across that capacitor anymore. Um, so again, it turn it on, it charges up. It's kind of like a battery in that sense. It charges up until it's full, then no current, and I flip the switch, and now it discharges. So let's take a look next at what happens when I increase this capacitance. So the, um, the impedance, if you recall the equation for impedance, it's um, 1 over J omega times C. So if I increase this capacitance, what that's going to do is actually decrease the impedance. So it's going to decrease the impedance to current for current to flow. So there's going to be um, more current flowing for longer to, to get this thing charged up. So I go ahead and, and run this now. You can see it's charging, but it's taking a little bit longer to get fully charged. In this case, you know, it's taken, um, you know, 20 seconds or 15 or 20 milliseconds to, um, to get charged up and if I go ahead and, and um, discharge it here you can see it's going to take longer to discharge too. So uh, this bigger capacitance means it has a slower response but also means it's storing more charge because you can see that that current was flowing for longer here It's got because it, it had more more charge that sort of built up on that capacitor. Um, so that's what changing that capacitance does. So um, let's go ahead and, and reduce that back down to 10 and what I'd like to do next is, um, is show what happens when as we vary that, that input voltage in, in a square wave. This is the, it's the same circuit, except now I've got this um, square wave input that's at 20 hertz. So what that means, let's go ahead and turn, flip the switch. If I just run this, and we can see that this, this is just my input voltage. And now it's starting off at five volts. And after 25 milliseconds, it's gonna drop to zero volts. And it's going to repeat that cycle every 50 milliseconds so that it does 20 of those cycles within a second, hence 20 hertz. So this is a 20 hertz square wave. And let's see how this um, circuit responds, that voltage across our capacitor in particular. You see, yeah, it, when I turn it on, it goes up to 5 volts. That capacitor is charging. And at 75 milliseconds, it'll drop. And now that capacitor's voltage is going down. And that, that current flowed the other way. And now it's kind of catching up. So you can see that... This, um, the voltage across this capacitor essentially mimics that voltage of our source. It just takes it a little bit of time to catch up. But once it catches up for the majority of the cycle, it's, it's essentially the same. So this would be a signal that would pass because it's, um, for the majority of the time, it's just mimicking what that, what that input is. So let's see what happens if we go ahead and ratchet this up a little bit to 80 hertz, 80, let's go 85 hertz. Um, 85 hertz happens to be about the cutoff frequency because the cutoff frequency is going to be equal to 1 over 2 pi times the capacitance times the resistance. And if we, if we do that calculation here with 10 microfarads and 187 ohms, we end up with 85 hertz. So this is what happens when you put in the cutoff frequency in the square wave into this circuit. Let's go ahead and run it. 
So you can see it responds when it drops, it responds when it when it um, goes up, but it's kind of just barely catching up to it. So for the the um, for a lot of this cycle, that voltage isn't caught up, but at the end it is. So this ends up attenuating the output signal by 50%. So the output, the power at the output of this um, around this capacitor would be half of what the input power was, because for a lot of that cycle, it's 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 not going to be quite caught up yet. Now um, let's go ahead and see what happens when we change this to let's say 500. Ratchet that up a bit. So 500. Now this signal is oscillating really quick. And you can see that our output signal in the red here isn't really catching up to it. It's kind of, um, it's trying to, but it's not, it doesn't definitely doesn't get up to that maximum voltage of the source. So this would be a significantly attenuated signal because it just can't catch up. And if we go ahead and ratchet this up even further, let's go 5K, you can see that that's just way too fast. And our, sig our um, output doesn't respond at all. So this would be a very significantly attenuated signal so that almost none of this signal would go through at 5 kilohertz. So, so you can see how this operates as a, a low pass filter because that signal at 20 hertz um, passed almost, almost identical, but now the signal at 5 kilohertz isn't really passing at all in our, our output voltage across the capacitor. And one way to, another way to look at this is to go ahead and look at the frequency response chart. So this is a frequency um, response chart for this particular circuit. And if you go down to this x-axis here, this is actually going to be in hertz. It's on, it's on a log scale. So it's going from 10 hertz over here all the way up to um, 5 kilohertz over here. And this y-axis is the attenuation. So when it's up here at around 20, this is not really attenuated at all. It's like it's essentially at one right here. It's not. It's and that was our 20 hertz signal that that really um, passed well. If we go up to 80 hertz, it's right about here, and you can see that this is close to negative 3 dB, which is our um, our cutoff frequency for this. And, that, and you can see the attenuation is a little bit lower. That that, that line's a little bit lower, meaning it's going to be somewhat attenuated right here. And if we went up to 500 hertz. That would be right around here. You can see it's at negative 15 dB, more attenuated. And we can go up to 5 kilohertz way up here. You can see it's even more significantly attenuated. So you can see how everything kind of falls on this um, frequency plot. So anyway, this is how low-pass filters work to accept the, the lower frequencies like that 20 hertz, but reject those higher frequencies like that 5K hertz signal that we saw. And hopefully you can see it's dependent on that temporal response of our capacitor. And um, if you understand kind of how that works, back to those fundamentals of how a capacitor works, then it should be pretty straightforward to understand how a high-pass filter works. And from there, it should be pretty straightforward to also understand how a low-pass and high-pass filters with inductors instead of capacitors work as well. So um, hopefully this helps your understanding. And until next time, take care.